Hi, my name is Bridget Burbank, and I live in Texas, but I grew up in Idaho, and um, I've always voted conservative all of my life. I've believed that the federal government was taking over too many responsibilities that private um, companies or more local uh, governments should have charge over, and um, I felt like that there was an and still do, in fact, feel like there is um, a troubling trend toward power being centralized in the federal government and particularly in the presidency. Um, I took world civilizations and um, a class called American Heritage um, at my church college that I went to and felt very, very strongly that um, that our country is exceptional, not because we're better people or not because of any genetic superiority or anything like that, but simply because we've been given opportunities and we've been given a system of government that's stable and functional and that because of those privileges that God has given to us, it's our obligation to help others to um, lift themselves up out of tyranny and poverty. And that's always been a very big um, belief of mine. And the belief that, you know, someone like John McCain, you go around to talk to dissidents, help them to understand what good stable government looks like and help them be able to challenge um, those in power um, who are oppressing their people and to spread the principles of freedom around the world. Um, when the 2016 primary campaign came along, I didn't even think about Donald Trump at first. Um, I saw all these wonderful candidates, Carly Fiorina, Marco Rubio. Um, I liked um, Ted Cruz. I liked but pretty much everybody, um, I was pregnant in 2015 and gave birth to my fourth son. Um, and I was pregnant during the time when they were releasing all the videos about Planned Parenthood and the way they were talking about unborn children or aborted children with such callous terms. And it was so comforting to me to think that we would be able to elect one of these very qualified, highly professional candidates uh, to uh, challenge Hillary Clinton, who was the presumptive Democratic um, nominee. And I kept thinking that Donald Trump would either drop out or people would it would stop listening to him. I didn't like him. Um, I thought his plan to secure the border was impractical. I still do. Um, and I stood up against him during the primaries um, to my friends, to my family, um, warning them about the 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 really scary things that I saw about Donald Trump. Um, but once he secured the nomination, um, there was still, there was a few people that were still, you know, never Trump, but a lot of people just became never Hillary. And, and they decided that they, that they could vote for Donald Trump in spite of all of the problems um, and flaws that he has as a person. Um, I wanted to show my children that party doesn't determine um, who you vote for. Um, and if the parties, I believe that both of the parties, the major parties came up with two very flawed candidates, neither of one, neither one of which I could vote for. And um, I was so, so disappointed, um, but I voted for Evan McMullen in 2016, and I was hopeful, very hopeful that Donald Trump would be able to be presidential, that he would be able to bring our people together, 
Um, my first pick in the primary candidates was Ben Carson because I thought that perhaps he would be able to reach out to black Americans who feel marginalized and help them to um, feel more a part of the Republican Party and um, as a way of kind of selling the message, the conservative message, because I believe that it's applicable to all people all over the world, the the concepts of, of human rights given by God, um, the idea that government, good government is set up to defend those basic rights. And um, I feel like that that's a message for everyone, um, regardless of the color of their skin or their genealogy, their background. Um, and when Donald Trump got the nomination, I felt like that that was a big step back in the Republican efforts to reach out to minorities. Um, but again, when he was elected, I was hopeful. I was hopeful that he would be humbled, that he would listen to his advisors and that he would abandon some of his more um, impractical uh, campaign promises. Uh, but when he said that there were good people on both sides after Charlottesville, um, I realized that he would never be able to bring our country together, that he would never be able to um, earn the trust of African Americans and other minority groups who face so much hatred right now and the hatred that's been inflamed by this president and his um, cyberbullying and his um, calling people names. Um, and I called publicly for him to be impeached and I got so much blowback from my friends and family. Um, and every time he did something um, that I thought was truly horrible, I believed that they would, um, that they would agree with me eventually and, and say, this is, this is wrong. And we can't have somebody like this leading our country. It's not fair to the other Americans that he's, that he's hurting. Um, but it didn't seem to matter. Um, some people seemed to like the fact that he was hurting people. Um, and I found myself um, having quarrels and disagreements with family members. Um, they, they couldn't understand why I hated this man. Apparently I'm full of hatred, although I actually feel very sorry for him because he's in a job he's not qualified for. And that isn't a place anybody wants to be. Um, he's a very tortured soul. The fact that he feels the need to be president when he's not qualified. Um, and that he has a victim mentality about anybody that tries to hold him accountable for the mistakes that he's made in office. Um, he's seriously a person that I feel very sorry for. I don't hate him, but I do hate the fact that he is leading our country in division and extreme uh, rhetoric that appeals to the worst in my friends and family. And I felt myself be <clears throat> marginalized and um, even in my church community, I feel uncomfortable. Um, I see people posting pro-Trump things on social media. Many of them are factually inaccurate um, and it's caused me to not trust those people anymore. Um, it, it makes me wonder, you know, they can vote for a president that calls me human scum because I um, 
have legitimate concerns about his presidency and the way he's treated people. And when you vote for him and you say, oh, well, he's endured so much persecution from the mainstream media or whatever. And I think to myself, what, what did you think was going to happen when you elected a man with no leadership experience? He is not a leader. He doesn't have the qualities of a leader. He does nothing but divide and, and try to take the most divisive members of the Democratic Party and put them up as, um, as representatives for all the Democrats, which is very unfair, especially where they nominated Joe Biden, who was the most moderate of the primary candidates, in my opinion. I feel like that they have given Republicans an off-ramp. And I am no longer a Republican, so, um, but I do feel like that this is an opportunity. You can vote for Joe Biden. We can get rid of Donald Trump, and then we can start to heal as a nation. Um, I found myself in friend groups that are more liberal now, and sometimes I don't feel accepted by them either. Uh, but I do feel like I understand them better than I did before. And I didn't realize how much Fox News and other conservative sources of media had turned me against my fellow American citizens. Um, Democrats are not our enemies. Um, Democrats and Republicans are countrymen. We're supposed to work together. Um, yes, we see the world differently, but we're not enemies. And I know that Joe Biden is um, somebody who wants to bring people together and he wants to listen. And that is the most important quality in a president is being able to listen and be able to be respectful. It doesn't matter if the, if the governor of a state is Democratic, Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. They're a member of the United States. It doesn't matter if we're Democrats or Republicans, our president needs to represent all Americans. And I feel like that Joe Biden can do that. Um, I really hope that re the Republican Party can come away from this trend. Um, we need to elect people who are um, able to build relationships of trust across party lines. Um, that's very, very important. Um, also, not cheat on elections. That, that's really, really basic. And I've, I've heard so many people put up a straw man for the Ukraine incident and say, oh, well, that was no big deal. Yes, it was a big deal. It was a really big deal. He asked China for help in his re-election campaign. He, he asked for Ukraine to help him with his re-election campaign. And he with, withheld funds for the Ukrainians fighting against the Russians. He withheld those things like a mob boss. That's not who we are. As Americans, we are better than this. We're better than this president. Um, I hope that eventually we can heal these deep wounds. I want to be a part of that healing process. I want to be a part of that bridging between Democrats and Republicans to help us understand that we don't have to get caught up on these wedge issues, abortion, Second Amendment. Um, we don't need to fight with one another. We need to come together, find innovative solutions to our problems, look outside the box, um, work to gain bipartisan consensus for real solutions. Um, 
God bless. God bless America. May we come through this stronger with a better understanding of who we are and what our role is in the world and to our fellow citizens. Thank you.